Hello, welcome. It's another week without Joe Sanson. What was the excuse this time? Uh, in all fairness to Joe, um, a power cut, um, which seems like utter nonsense in, in 2024. But um, Jack Stroud is here. How are you, Jack? I am. I'm very well. Very well. Very happy to be back on the channel. Um, there are three things you can guarantee in this life. Uh, one is death. One is taxes, and one is Jack Stroudley talking about a Fulham loss on the on the YouTube channel. I've just realised I haven't plugged in my microphone, which is oh, really dear. weird. Given I've been sat here for like five two minutes. Are we in? Oh no! Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. Excuse me. Um, let's just keep rolling. Here we go. One, two. Um, welcome along to the Jack and Jack show. Um, we were both at the game at Craven Cottage on Saturday um, for our sins. Yeah. Goodness gracious me. Um, it finished 4-1 to Wolves. What was your main takeaway from the game? Uh, it was just one of those games, really, wasn't it? Um, I'm not really looking too much into the scoreline. Um, I think Wolves, over the course of the game, probably deserved to win. Um, albeit we did have our chances. I think that 4-1 is generous. Um, obviously, it was 2-1 up until Yoki Anderson went off. Um, and we played the final, what, 10, 15 minutes with a back three of Tete. Well, it wasn't even Tete, it was Castagna, Robinson and Bassi. Yeah. Um, so it was just a bit of a mess, really. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of the main takeaway, not to be too worried about the scoreline, because on the face of it, it looks caught by the oh, you've lost four onto walls, you were you were terrible. And while I don't think we were we we were great, I don't think we were we were horrific by any stretch of the imagination. If if Raul Jimenez doesn't miss from five yards out early on and Alex Awobi obviously scores, Fulham are tuned it up and you could make the argument as cliche as it is, the game goes in a completely different direction at that point. Um, mm. I think it's just one of those things, you know, again, without being too cliche, just kind of dusting ourselves down and going again. Yeah, no, it was it was it was obviously all sunshine and rainbows 20 minutes in. And I was thinking, here we go. This is, you know, we, we, we're playing some good stuff. But I think credit has to be given to the opposition. Um, they really had our number for, you know, once they got the equaliser, which was a brilliant ball over the top by by Mario Lamina. Uh, brilliantly finished by Cunha. I think they had our number from there, and I really thought we struggled to not only create, but just thought our reaction was really, really poor. Um, and obviously, uh, Anderson going off was it was obviously a, a massive uh, issue. Uh, the weather was was horrendous conditions, but but obviously there's two teams on the pitch, and and one obviously got got on with the game, and we I just thought we were really uninspiring, really for for 70 minutes at least. Um, it wasn't really a 4-1 game, but, you know, when you lose a player... And, and fair play to Marco for trying to make those changes early and, and putting on five subs. Um, but you do run the risk of, of losing a player to injury. It doesn't happen very often, but it has happened. And, um, yeah, Anderson would be, uh, you know, not at the top of my list of players that I want to get injured for Fulham. Uh, he'd be somewhere down the bottom. So we go to the Spurs game now, and I don't think I want to dwell on the, the, the Wolves game too much longer now we we look ahead to Spurs who have somewhat of an injury crisis of themselves uh, Romero van der Ven now Vicario out for months um so in comes Davis and Dragos in and I'm guessing Fraser Forster uh, feeling a little bit more confident than you were maybe on on Saturday evening about this one yeah I think it's one of those weird ones obviously van der Ven it might be back I think I think that's very much We'll wait and see Andy's press conference, which I guess will probably be Saturday, given the fact that they're playing Thursday in the... be like Friday morning, probably. Oh, OK. Fair enough. Well, there we go. But either way, we'll, we'll, we'll find out after the, after this is, is, has been published, um, whether Van der Ven's back. Um, indeed, I'd like him not to be. I know that Davis and Dragazin kept a clean sheet against City, but when in, you imagine the way that we'll play will be kind of quick with transition on the break. Um, and Van der Ven is very good at just kind of clearing things out when you know a team are looking to break out quickly Vicario is a big one um I think that I'm not overly convinced by him from set pieces but I think shot stopping wise I think Vicario is very very good um and I think that Fraser Forster is obviously 
a lot worse than Vicario. You know, there's a reason why he's a backup and, and this, that and the other. Um, so I think that Fulham can go into it with a little bit of confidence. Obviously, Ben Tancur is out as well. Um, yeah. Tottenham winning 4-0 at City. Um, you know, they, they, they have a habit of not going on runs and, and being consistent. And they've shown, you know especially at home this season, that they, they can leak goals. Obviously, lost to Ipswich um, against West Ham. They were 1-0 down at half-time. Um, I believe they, there's definitely been a few others where they've conceded first, albeit come back into the game. So there's definitely scope to get at them. Um, and weirdly, I'm actually feeling quietly confident about this one. I agree. I agree. I'm feeling pretty confident because... Because Spurs are unpredictable. And even after that win um, on Saturday against City, as fantastic as it was, as impressive as it was, Spurs have put in performances this season that um, would concern fans. And, and they are the reason why they're, you know, they're not knocking on the top four right now. In fact, you know what? I mean, they're sixth right now. I mean, they are knocking on the door as, as such, but they're not in the top four. It's because they've, They've dropped really silly points in, in in games that they should have picked up. I mean, you know, you host Ipswich and you, you imagine that's the home banker, but you, that's why the Premier League is so special. And this is why this, this Premier League season has been fantastic so far, because it really genuinely has been, on a game-by-game -game basis, very, very unpredictable. I mean, you've got a four-time champion in Manchester City who have gone on a, a run of, well, in all comps, or is it six games without a win now, um, which is quite insane. Um, you've got a Liverpool team who lost Jurgen Klopp, got in a new manager and you think there might be some teething issues. No, they've absolutely been almost almost flawless so far this season. You've had teams who have really impressed, like Brighton, I would say Forest, I'd say Villa. Obviously, Villa are very, very good. I'd say ourselves as well. And then, you know, down the bottom, Manchester United still sort of taking their time to get going. They've got the new manager in as well. And and, and Crystal Palace, who we really thought we would, would do fantastically well this season, have not done fantastically well this season. And then like, even the game on the Monday night, you know, I was watching Monday night football and no one was really giving West Ham a, a, a single prayer. And then they win 2-0 against Newcastle. It's been, a, it's been a fascinating season. And I do think that, you know, more shock results will happen this season. I think Fulham could be one of those. You know, OK, last week I was really looking at this thinking we're going to, I think we're going to go to Spurs and I think we're going to win. Now I think it's like, well, OK, let's just, let's hold hold back on that. I think we'll draw. I think we'll get something from the game. Um, that's due to the the injury crisis. That I'd say was it a, is it a crisis? I mean, there's no Odder Bear. There's no Richarlison. Like you say, there might be Van der Ven, Romero out, Vicario out, Bentancur out. Whereas Fulham just have Harrison Reed out. Sander Berger will be back after his illness last week. Oh, I, I fancy I fancy our chances. The high line that, that Spurs play. Um, I think I've said this a lot of times this week now that the reason we we didn't perform very well at Spurs last season at, uh, at the stadiums because we were playing two left-sided centre-backs and we were so unbalanced. And actually the goals came from those mistakes um, that we gave the ball away at the back, really, with, with Son and James Madison. Calvin Bassey just didn't have a very good game that night, nor did Tim Ream. I'm feeling good. And, and well, I'm not feeling great, to be fair. I'm not after a 4-1 defeat, but I'm, I'm feeling fairly positive. And what I will say is that this is how I think I should... This is how I think Fulham should line up. Um, Leno in goal, Robinson would be Diop, uh, Bassi and Tete. I'd go with Berger and Lukic and probably Pereira. Uh, you know, Smith Rowe or Awobi centrally would be fantastic, but it probably will be Pereira. And then I'd go Awobi left, Adama coming back in the team at the right and down the middle, Raul Jimenez. Um, obviously, I, I want to see Muniz play, but. I haven't been too impressed with Muniz's cameos when he's come off the bench, apart from Manchester City maybe this season. Um, it does feel like that patch, which we now describe as purple for Muniz, probably was a purple patch. Um, I'd love to see him recreate that form. Of course, he scored against Spurs last season at the Cottage in that marvellous run he was on. From the 11 I just said, is there anything you change from that? Um, well, I think firstly... We don't know fully what's going on with Yoki Manderson as of yet. So yeah. if Yoki Manderson is fit, he he obviously comes in. If he doesn't, it'll be it's a Diop. 
Um, the rest of the back four and the goalkeeper, obviously, I agree with. The midfield, I absolutely agree with you as well. And I think there'll be people that will be a bit like, why Why are you playing Smith-Rowe? Not, why aren't you playing Smith-Rowe? Why, um, why are you playing Pereira? And I think for me, the reason why I agree with you is I feel like in games where there's a lot of transition, per se, and there's a lot of in the midfield battle, Smith-Rowe sometimes can feel like a little bit of a, of a passenger and things can seem to go through him in my opinion, anyway. And I think that when you're playing Tottenham, a team that are going to be, you know, pressing and doing all this sort of stuff, you want as many runners as possible. And I think that having the midfield of Berger, Lukic and Pereira works best for that because Pereira will run, you know, all three of those played against Manchester City. And while we didn't win, it was a very, very good performance. And on another day, we would have got a result. So I completely agree with that midfield. I also would shift Iwobi out and I would drop Nelson. Um, I think Harry Wilson deserves his chance. I really do. I think, yeah. that, I think that Harry Wilson should play um, on the right-hand side. The reason why I feel both, both him and Adama have got very different traits, I guess. Uh, and I just think that you want the technical ability in that, final third and I think technically Harry Wilson is on fire at the moment he was really good off the bench against Wolves and I think that a Dharma Traore suits the longer the game goes on assuming the game is 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 close the more it suits bringing a Dharma off the bench than it does Harry Wilson because of just a purely how high of a line Tottenham play that's my opinion anyway and then up front again I've not been convinced by Muniz in the summer I thought we didn't really need to bring a striker in. We've got Muniz, and between him and Jimenez, they'll get the goals. I'm now going into this January transfer window thinking we need a striker. We definitely need a striker. Um, but for now, Raul Jimenez up top. Yeah, I think that that's interesting that you went with Wilson over Adama. Um, I get the point about when the game is is stretched and if it's tight, then we bring on a Dharma Traore. But I'm imagining a scenario where imagine if the game isn't like that and we're chasing it and suddenly we're two or three goals down and bring on a Dharma Traore just, just doesn't feel like as magical or special as, as the prospect is of starting him, which means that from the off, it's not like Spurs will, will you know will sort of drop back and then play a higher line as the game goes on. They're always going to be playing that high line, so there's always going to be opportunity to get in behind them. And what happened at Manchester City so well was that we actually got those balls out and we got in behind them many, many times through Adama Traore. OK, maybe if he gets in a little bit wider this time and not go for goal every time, then maybe we might have a better chance of scoring if he can lay it square to Raul Jimenez or or uh, or Alex Sawobi. But um, I think that's my thinking as well. Yeah, I would love Wilson to start. And I just feel like dropping Awobi would just be incredibly harsh. I think that Awobi and Lukic were the only players who came out on Saturday with their heads held high a little bit. I've got to say, Lukic, you know, coming back in, obviously, Berger was ill. I was very nervous that he wouldn't be able to complete this 90. But the first 45 was as good as we've seen from Lukic so far this season, especially in the lead up to the goal. Um, but yeah, just a word again on on, on Wolves. Um, I think they're a good team and they shouldn't be where they are on the table. And they've been unlucky in, in a few games this season. I think that win is going to really boost their uh, their confidence. And I think that they've got a really nice run of fixtures now up until Boxing Day, where they host Manchester United. And I do you think that they're going to probably finish probably bottom half, but but quite comfortably away from relegation zone, which actually puts more pressure on uh, Ipswich. It puts more pressure on Crystal Palace, Southampton. And I do think after Steve Cooper being sacked, which we could quickly talk about, actually, if you, if you want, I think Leicester are in real trouble now. Um, Leicester are, are in real trouble. What did you make of that sacking? I, I thought it was strange, to, to say the least. Um However, looking at Leicester fan reaction, they were all relatively quite pleased with the way that Steve Cooper, of the fact that Steve Cooper was gone. I don't think they were convinced by his team selection, by his tactics, um, and whatnot. But on the to play devil's advocate to that, they have had quite a decent start to the season. Everyone had them finishing bottom, like comfortably bottom. And you know, yes, we are only 10, 11 games in. But they are they are in and around it. They've picked up points against teams that they would like to pick up points against. Um, they've been a little bit unlucky with injuries. I think Fatawu being out is a is a huge, huge loss for them. Yeah. Um, but I think that Steve Cooper generally was doing the best with what was available at his disposal. I don't think that that squad is good enough to stay up 
to be to be honest with you. I looked at that eleven that played against Chelsea, and yes, I know they have a few injuries, but I just I wasn't. I'm just I'm not convinced by it at all. I don't think what Walt Faye is at the back. I just, I just don't think he's I don't think he's good enough. The midfield is okay in terms of you, you've got what Harry Winks and. And a few others. It, uh, the names have completely gone from my head now, but you've got a few others in the midfield as well um, who are okay. I don't think they've got enough goals. I don't think uh, uh, Jamie Vardy is aging. Are you? It's okay. I guess they've obviously got Bobby Reed, but you, I, I wouldn't bank on Bobby Reed hitting, you know, double digits for goals or anything like that. And you need at least someone who's going to do that. Um, so I think they will go down. Um, and in terms of the yeah, back to, sorry, I've gone, I've fully gone on a ramble here. But back to it, I think that the, I think that the um, the, the sacking was a surprising one, um, and I think that Leicester fans who are like, oh, I'm so glad he's gone. It's a little bit of be careful what you wish for. I'm just having a look at um, Leicester. Odson Edward, who's on loan apparently, where well, he's on loan from Crystal Palace, has he? He's just hardly uh, featured. I, 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 genuinely, I forgot he even went to Leicester. That tells you all you need to know about the amount of minutes he's playing. I was looking at the squad against Chelsea and he wasn't even listed as a player who was injured. He wasn't even in the squad. My, my, my one concern, well, my real concern about, about Leicester is um, their lack of firepower up front. I think Vardy obviously still can score goals at this level and and has proven that this season. Uh, Bobby Deagold over had a decent um, spell off the bench. For Leicester, Bonanotte has obviously been probably the standout player. They're now without Fatawu, but Mavadidi as well. But they also have Pats and Daka on the bench as well. Um, and Ayu, who of course scored the winner in their last the last time they won a game against Southampton. And I, I the, the the main takeaway from the game we played against Leicester this season was once once we went ahead, I had well good for us. I had no confidence that Leicester would get back in the game. Um, but they do have players who can score. But um, yeah, it's it's been a torrid run of form, and obviously you know shipping five to. United in the cup, losing them by by three goals to no in the league. Uh, losing at home to, to Forest was a real, real dagger to the heart, um, especially against C. Cooper's old team. I don't know why we're spending so much time talking about Leicester, but I suppose because we didn't really want to talk about Wolves, the game, and we've sort of done uh, Tottenham already. Uh, it was worth talking about. Yeah, I think I think Leicester could get dragged down. I, th- I think Ipswich have shown in- encouraging signs in the last few weeks. Um, obviously, they've only won one game against you know, Sunday's opponents in, in Tottenham. But um, if they continue to plug away and and and, um, and make life difficult for those who come to Portman Road, I just I just wonder, like, oh, do you know what? It's, it's so frustrating because because if you're an Ipswich fan, you must be thinking there's a lot of credit in the bank, but they just keep drawing games. If you're drawing games, it just doesn't get you enough points to get out of whatever mess you're going to get yourselves into or whatever, you know, they need enough points to survive. And at the end of the day, it might just come down to the fact that they've just drawn too many games, need to convert those into wins. Even the game against Brighton, they drew 0-0 and they would dominate the whole game. The lap hitting the post with their only real chance of the game. The game against Fulham, they probably came closest to winning that. In fact, no, sorry, the game against Leicester, they should have won that. I mean, they conceded in the last minute um, to drop to drop points and, and then the game against us as well. So I don't know why we're, we're, we're looking at teams down the bottom, but um, it's always nice to sort of peek down below. I'm not saying a Fulham are out of any trouble um, because we might be in a whole load of trouble if we don't pick up points in our next few games. Are you concerned by the, the, the fixtures we've got coming up and, and maybe a lack of points coming towards Fulham? No, is the short answer, to be honest yeah. with you. I, yes. I've, we've, got, we've got enough credit in the bank, just to quote what you've said, and enough points on the board, I think. You know, yeah. we, we're, on, we're on 18 points at the moment, and it's coming into December. We 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 are we are we're, we're we're fine. Even if we don't get anything, which by the way I don't think will happen. Even if we don't get anything out of Tottenham, Brighton, Arsenal, Liverpool, I I still think we're 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 fine and we have no reason to to stress. Mm-hmm. But I think that we're we're a good side. I think we're a very good team who just had a bit of an off day and a little bit unlucky with certain things. Um, and I think especially in these next two, Tottenham and Brighton. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we came away from it with with four points. I thought after Saturday's game, I kind of switched off a bit after work. I just thought I was just sort of going to go out and enjoy myself and not really think about it. The next day, I looked at not only Twitter, not only Blue Sky, but but Facebook as well. 
Fucking hell. It's such a massive overreaction. One defeat, uh, 4-1, people saying the result is unacceptable. Yeah, I, I agree to some extent, but you've got to think of the context behind that. The fourth goal was a fucking four on two. I don't know why I've lost my head a bit, but it was like, I just, I couldn't quite believe the reaction after such a positive start to the season to lose one game. And I feel like in a 38 game period, in a 38 game season, you're going to have a day where it just doesn't go your way. You know, and like honestly, everything about Saturday was, was poor. You know, the, the way in which we conceded a couple of the goals, okay, I thought the goals were really good, but, um, you know, the, the second one was, we, we were really unlocked, really. Um, I've said, I mentioned the weather, which obviously doesn't really apply because both teams will experience the same thing. But it was just a blustery day, wasn't it? It was, and um, it just wasn't great. The atmosphere was flat, I have to say. The atmosphere was really flat. Considering the last home game we had, it was it was obviously it was such a sleepy 3 p.m. sort of sort of atmosphere. It's, it's something you experience at the cottage quite quite often. But I thought the I thought the reaction was just incredibly over the top. Um, I. I the one thing I didn't agree with with Marco Silva in the game was bringing off Smith Rowe when he did for, for Tom Kearney. But then again, I looked at it and went, we don't really have many midfield options and maybe we needed something um, to change it in that midfield area. It's one of those things. If we go and beat Spurs, which I don't think is absolutely impossible, by the way, I do think there's a chance, even though they beat Man City 4-0 last week. I just think I think everyone just needs to, to calm. I think everyone has calmed down, obviously, but... Sunday morning, I was, uh, you know, I was my, my head was a little bit hot reading, uh, reading all the socials. But um, shall we end with a, a score prediction then? What do you think yeah. is going to happen? Yeah, why not? Why not? Eh? Um, I honestly, I think that we're going to take the lead. Um, I think we're going to lead going into the break. Uh, I think Tottenham will equalise um, and they'll then pile on pressure, pile on pressure, and we'll defend really well and we'll come away with a point. I'm going to go one all. Oh, that's interesting because I had it in my head for a couple of weeks we were going to win, but now I have to. I've altered that and think we're going to draw. And now I don't know how that's going to go as such. I think I might have to agree with you. Leading at the break, they equalise and we sort of hold on. That'll be a very giddy concourse, I'm sure. <laughs> um, at half time, it's actually it, it's worth noting that you know I've been in the press box for every game this season, and um, I'm actually going to be in the away end, which I didn't expect to happen. It was, it was just one of those things that's out of my control. So um, luckily, <laughs> my brother Luke, I said. I've got a problem here. I'm actually not getting a press pass for for Sunday. Um, I need to get a ticket. And he went, oh, why don't you just use mine? I said, well, you've already got a ticket. He said, oh, I don't... Well, I I mean, I, I don't want to do him a disservice. But he basically said, I don't think we're going to win. Therefore, have my ticket. Thought, you <laughs> fair weather fan. But, oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, I'll take it. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to being in the away end. I won't lie. I have sort of missed being in the crowd. having a few drinks before the game. You're going to be there as well. So when you say one nil up at half time, the concourse at half time is going to be very fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to obviously seeing you in the concourse and having a pint mm. and a chat. But of all the games to pick to go in the away end, you were, you have picked the one worst, of the worst, the absolute <laughs> worst. And since Tottenham away, I just, I, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. You, it's one thirty on a Sunday. Oh. You've got you've got about a twenty six mile walk from Seven Sisters to get <laughs> to, and it's just oh, it's just not fun, not fun at all. Just just thinking out loud in terms of plans. I mean, to stay behind and watch the, the late kickoff somewhere local to the ground, and then going to to White Hart Lane um, after the game because then it would be more quiet to get the overground back would probably be the the best bet. I can imagine a scenario on Sunday where people are coming up to me in the concourse saying, what the hell is a polar bear doing in Arlington, Texas? <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> Why are you here? Um, I've got it to be missing out on the on the media food, to be fair. But um, it'd be nice to for, for those who, who subscribe to my Patreon or who want to subscribe to my Patreon um, to make some, some slightly more fan-engaging, well, no, not fan-engaging, fan, fan from the fans' perspective content. As opposed to from the press box content, hopefully we'll be back on the in the press box for the Thursday night game against Brighton. So yeah, Jack and Joe or Jack and whoever. I mean, who's going to be on next? <laughs> um, well, we've we'll we've, both, we've both said that we're not going to lose, so it won't be me. Yeah, Joe Sanson, Joe Sanson doesn't turn up when 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 we, when we <laughs> lose. So, well, we'll see. We'll probably be back on the Tuesday or Monday uh, ahead of that Thursday night game. 
Jack, the, the games are about to come thick and fast. It, it's the most wonderful time of the year, according to, to some people on the radio. It's, it is. It is indeed. It is indeed. Thank you very much for having me on. Uh, I always enjoy these. Um, it's a very, very busy period of football. Um, you know, as you said or alluded to earlier, you know, there was a little bit of a meltdown after the Wolves game. Um, mm. And as much as we've said, oh, we, we, we might, Fulham might go here and get a result. You know, Tottenham could very easily win the game. And I, I think that just a bit of perspective might be needed and not a bit of an overreaction if, you know, we lose again on Sunday. Not yeah, that, that. No, that's a good point. I mean, to be fair, you, you look at the, the injury issues that, that Spurs have, you still have a front three, sorry, a front four of Son, Kulisevsky, slash Brennan Johnson, Madison and Solanke. I mean, that is as strong as as you'll get in the Premier League. So, um, so yeah, it, it's going to be a tough one. Um, I, yeah, it is. I, I predict 1-1. One, one. I do predict 1-1. One, one. I think goals from James Madison. Oh, sorry, we take the lead. Anthony Robinson to score for Fulham. I could see him getting loads so. of space down I the left-hand so. side. And he just goes, yeah, I'm just going to shoot. And he goes like near post and scrums past or be Forster in goal. Forster, yeah. So, yeah, we'll see you guys on Sunday. Thanks so much for watching. And Jack, thanks so much for being here, mate. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Uh, yeah, let, let's call it a day. Take care, Garnier. Thank you.